We have this paradox because we have no fundamental understanding of time. In quantum atom theory, each individual atom of our universe creates its own space-time geometry relative to its position and momentum. Because it is impossible to achieve absolute zero, all atoms radiate electromagnetic radiation continuously, even the atoms of an ordinary cat. Just like ripples on a pond, each atom will radiate out light spheres of quantized wave fronts. Each wave front will create a probability of a future event. When a wave front comes in contact with the electrons on the surface of another atom, it will create a new moment in time and space in the form of a photon-electron coupling. This has nothing to do with consciousness. All atoms create their own space-time geometry. But it is because life in the form of an observer, or even a cat, can choose when and where to collapse the wave function that we have free will. Life will create its own ripples in the fabric of space-time, forming its own broken symmetry of its own evolutionary path. To put this very simply, time moves at the speed of light, and energy and mass slow it down to form their own space-time geometry. Therefore the cat will collapse the wave function, creating its own independent reality of time and space. And there is no superposition of half-live, half-dead cats. When any object performs an action, changing its position and momentum, it will also change the frequency of electromagnetic radiation. The Planck constant will then change relative to that frequency. This will give the object a unique position in time and space. And this is the reason why we have Einstein's theories on relativity. To fully understand this, we need to look not just down into the probability of the quantum world of the atoms, but also up into the beauty and perfection of the night sky. If we look up at the stars, we can see back in time through light years of space. The further we look, the further we see back in time. The position of the observer within the universe makes no difference. Whatever planet or galaxy he observes from, he will see the universe expanding and be able to look back in time in all directions. The observer is at the center of his own reference frame because he is creating his own space-time geometry relative to his position and momentum. This process of looking back in time can be put in reverse and the closer we look at an object the less time can elapse. The light from the sun takes just over 8 minutes to reach us and moonlight takes 1.28 seconds. When we look down into an atom we can see time dependent quantum mechanics. When the atoms bond together forming interference patterns of their own. But when we zoom in on an individual atom, we find time-independent quantum mechanics, and there is no flow or arrow of time, and all we have is an electron cloud of probability. The probability of the uncertainty principle is the same probability that the observer will have with any future event. This is because the process of time is created by photon-electron couplings that expand as a quantum wave particle function as an inverse volume of space in the form of light spheres of quantized wave fronts creating the forward motion of time. Therefore time has the symmetry and geometry of space-time and it is this symmetry that creates in entanglement. We can see time is a thing in itself because we have time dilation when objects accelerate towards the speed of light. We also have gravitational time dilation around objects of great mass that can be seen as gravitational redshift in the electromagnetic spectrum. In quantum atom theory, it is because the atoms can distort the geometry of space and time that we have electromagnetic fields. It is time variations within magnetic fields that act as a source for the electric fields, and time varying electric fields is the source of the magnetic fields. When one field is changing in time, then a field of the other is induced. This will be relative to the position and momentum of the objects creating the time variations, the atoms themselves. The magnetic fields are always at right angles to the electric fields, 
forming a local space-time symmetry and geometry that will spiral out, creating the visual and mathematical patterns of our universe. The greater the angle in space, the greater the curvature of space-time, the stronger the electromagnetic field at that point in space and at that moment in time. This can be seen as sparks of light associated with static electricity. The atoms will even distort the geometry of space-time, creating electromagnetic discharge in the form of lightning. In this theory, it is only logical that the wonders of modern electronics are based on the paradoxes of quantum mechanics. This is because electric charge is quantized and we generate electric power mainly by changing magnetic fields or moving a conductor through a magnetic field. This will distort the geometry of space and time leading to the electromagnetic induction of our own created space-time. In quantum atom theory, the electromagnetic spectrum is a continuous flow of energy, therefore light is a wave, and it is time that is quantized. It is because of the wave nature of electromagnetic radiation that we can't achieve absolute zero. Waves by their nature have to move. The quantum of quantum physics is a variable of time, forming the geometry and symmetry of space-time. This can be seen because the curvature of space-time has left something behind in the curvature of solid objects. There are no straight lines in nature, from the curvature of the moon, to the bow of a tree, to the growth rings of the tree itself. The atoms bond together and then create their own space-time geometry and symmetry in unison. Everywhere we look we can see, within the diversity of nature, the same common symmetry, the same guiding force. This can only be because of an underlying symmetry and a continuous process of symmetry breaking. In quantum atom theory, this symmetry is the symmetry of time continuum that forms the geometry of space-time. There is a problem with this theory. The problem is that the universe is an infinity, therefore it will have no centre or outer limit. This will affect everything, even the theory itself. We can never have a theory of everything, because for every question we answer, we will create an infinite number of new, unanswered questions. Any theory will only ever explain a fraction of the beauty of creation. Therefore there is no upper limit to our creativity, no upper limit to the evolutionary process. There is, there is also something else very odd, and that is everything is visible to us. All we have to do is look. Electromagnetic radiation is visible to us in the visible part of the spectrum as light. The frequency and wavelength of electromagnetic radiation is visible to us as the different colours of that light. We even have emission and absorption lines within the spectrum so we can see the different types of atoms. There can only be one reason for this and that is the mind of God is infinite and we are looking at that infinity.